The uh, US uh, has said, well, President Joe Biden said in his State of the Union address last night uh, that America is going to increase food aid to Gaza by, among other things, building a port uh, to bring the aid into. This, uh, this is an extraordinary story because, of course, uh, the US president, like his predecessor, uh, has been insistent that US boots won't go on the ground anywhere. And uh, although it seems that they might not be exactly on the ground uh, in Gaza, uh, US boots will certainly be in the port and very near the ground. Mm. Esther, do you see this as an important escalation of American involvement in the Middle East? Well, it's, it's completely impractical. I think it was Colonel uh, Simon Diggins who said, this is not sustainable. And I think that's, that's, the, mm. that's the sort of key word to take, take away from this, not sustainable. Uh, there are obviously practical implications of if you have these, this, this port, someone needs to manage it, those mm. people need to be protected. Are they willing to pull the trigger if their lives are in, are in danger? And again, who will they be pulling the trigger against, which mm. could then escalate into a regional crisis? Um, so it's it's impractical. Obviously, it's, it's uh, ideologically incoherent. Biden is effectively undermining uh, his, his support for one of his allies by doing this, um, even though the, the Israelis are letting it go ahead. Um, but I think what most what concerns most people is what next? I think that's that's yeah. the biggest question because both sides are losing so much. I mean, you know, I, I was reading a statistic that uh, 200,000 um, Palestinians that work in Israel uh, from, from mm -hmm. the Gaza Strip are, are, can no longer work in Israel. Uh, yeah. And that's affecting farming in, in the region. That's affecting the Israeli economy. That's affecting, you know, this, this conflict is affecting the, the tech industry in, in, in Israel because so many of the people that work in tech are, are reservists that are now fighting in Gaza. This cannot, this cannot be allowed to go on. I mean, if he's doing this, if he's building this port, what most people are thinking is, oh my God, do you, do you expect this to go on for more months? Well, that's it. How temporary is temporary? Yeah. Mm. Because it's quite a structure to, to go and put up in the first place. It is quite exactly. something to say to Israel, we are just going to ignore you and uh, we are going to do this. Because one of your allies is sort of saying, no, you know, can we just calm this down? We need to come up with a solution. And America is just sort of rowing in and doing as it pleases. And I, I find that really difficult to, to understand how... Biden thinks that he can get away with it. I have to say, uh, it, it's, it's extraordinary as, a, as an example of mission creep. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, mm. that, that's the thing that the military and politicians are always most in fear of, is mission creep. The number of times that you send in a small force somewhere and before you know it, you're dragged in. Almost every conflict is like a kind of quick, quicksand. Yeah. It's extremely hard to get out of once you start, whatever the validity of it when you've started. Uh, I wanted to pick up one thing you said, Esther. You referred to the workers uh, from the Gaza Strip. That's a very, very important and underreported on story. Mm. Just before October the 7th, uh, there was meant to be another increase of yeah. Gazan workers, Palestinian workers working inside Israel and getting the permits to do so. And I have to say, one of the most tragic uh, second-order stories of this whole thing is the fact that uh, it's been discovered, and I've seen it myself on the ground, that a lot of the people who were killed in the communities around Gaza, uh, the information that the terrorists of the 7th had to tell them exactly which houses to go through go to well, from these workers were yeah. based on information from workers from Gaza so it's uh, it's a second order of a uh, priority perhaps but yeah I mean I see no likelihood of Gazan workers being back inside Israel well, yeah. anytime soon mm -hmm. because nobody trusts them anymore and um, and arguably with with, with some right um, just just very quickly and finally on on this uh, with the Gaza story. Of course, everything in American politics is not... Everything that is domestic is international, and everything that's international is domestic, yeah. and everything always comes back to former President Trump, who will be talking a bit uh, about a bit in the next segment. But uh, is, is this all some kind of manoeuvre to do with the elections in, uh, in November? Is, is, is Biden looking forward to that, trying to show his foreign policy credentials, or is this all just a cynical thing about the Democrat base that is is uh, increasingly worried about the Democrat president being such a strong ally of Israel. I mean, you can never ignore the fact that, of course, these politicians have their eye out on the election mm -hmm. and how, how their foreign policy uh, or their, 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 their image looks um, to the outside world. So, of course, that, that, is, that is the case. But I, I suspect he's hoping for something a bit more permanent. So I, in, in Biden's dream world, I suspect he would think, you know, Ukraine is wrapped up. He'll, he'll have a deal wrapped up before uh, Trump can say, I'm going to get them in the room and I'm going to sort this out. Um, and I think it's the same thing with, with sort of Israel-Gaza. Uh, I think he's hoping that he would have at least uh, the pause in fighting long enough for him to squeak by in the election, if, if that's yeah. even possible. Um, I, 
And, and, I do, and I do think you're right, that one eye on the election, mm. because what we know from politicians is always there's a half an eye looking at what is their legacy? Mm. Ah. What is their give to the world? And it doesn't surprise me that Biden is looking to be the peacekeeper of uh, the Middle East. Now, that's a tall ask, and I think he's going about it the wrong way, but I do think there's a, a, a real sort of hint of that in the air.